Hi all, welcome to the channel Cloud Knowledge. Today in this video, we'll demonstrate a scenario where we have to copy CSV files from one storage location in the storage account folder to another folder. And the condition is that if the CSV file is empty, means if it does not have any rows in it, then we will not copy that CSV file and if the CSV file has contents, that mean, means it has rows which is greater than 0, 1 and more than 1, then we will copy that CSV file to the destination folder. So this will be a small demonstration video and the usage of this demonstration will study at the end of the video. So let's see the scenario here first. So here if we go to the storage account, cloud knowledge into uh, storage account and inside the test input container we are okay so let me first take you to the containers here so in the storage account we have different containers and our files are placed inside the test input container okay inside the directory input files that is the folder is input files and here we have you can see several csvs like four csvs are here okay and let's try to open the csvs so this is the emp data.csv if we try to view the data here we have three columns and which has three rows okay it has some data let's go to the emp info.csv try to view so here you could see that there is no data in this file okay and you can see it has zero rows emp info as well as the size is zero b zero bytes then if we go to the third one which is employees infocopy.csv and try to edit it we can see that there are no data but two items are showing here data is none okay so here you could see that it has two bytes data okay although it does not have row but the size is greater than zero bytes okay so here comes the fourth uh, csv students marks.csv and again this has some data okay so we know that employees info copy has no data but the size is 2b and in uh, employee info.csv has 0 bytes and has no rows in it okay so both these files do not have rows in it okay and our requirement is to land this into the test output folder so, so if we go back to the cloud knowledge into storage account and we have the folder here there is a container here test output folder and we have the output files here so we'll try to land here in the test output output files the target files which have the data in the csv okay so let's go to the azure data factory and we'll try to implement this scenario so let's go to the author tab and create a new pipeline so let's name this as copy csv which has data copy csv has data our next job is to connect to the source data to connect to the test input folder right that is the input files folder inside the test input container to access these files one by one okay so since inside the test, test input input files we have several files here present in the form of csv and we will be going to uh, analyze each of the files one by one we have to create a parameter also for this files okay and to access these files and to get the data that is the row count of these files we will use the activity known as lookup activity okay so it's present inside the general tab here under the activities with the name as lookup so we'll take that lookup activity in the canvas okay and then in the general tab we'll leave the settings as is and we'll go to the settings tab here we'll try to connect to the source data set so let's click on new so we know that our data lies inside the storage into account as a csv it will be present let it be delimited text 17 then storage 1 the link service is already there for the storage account and we'll browse to the file path so it's inside the test input folder inside the input files folder that is the directory as these files so we'll not select any file we'll just leave it till the folder okay and click ok why we are not selecting files because we will parameterize it okay so this is done let's click on first row as header and then click ok 
So this is the source data set. Now we will open this source data set and here in the source data set we'll create a parameter okay for the file name. So let's name it as file name here. So we have created file name parameter here and we'll go back to the connection tab of the data set and here in the file path we'll add the dynamic content. Dynamic Under the dynamic content we will select the parameter file name which we have defined for this data set. So it will give us at the rate data set dot file name. Okay, and during runtime, we'll give this file name one by one to process those CSVs. So this is done at this level. And now, so if we come back here to the lookup activity in the settings, we can see in the source data set, the file name uh, parameter is appearing, which we have given in the data set level. Now, in order to give the value for this file name in the lookup activity, we have to create a pipeline parameter. So if we click on the canvas, not on the activity, it will give you the options, parameters, variables, settings and output to define at the pipeline level. So we'll create a new parameter and we'll name it as file, let's say, and we'll leave the type and default value as is string type only and we'll go back to the lookup. And in the value, we will add the dynamic content and from the parameters list, we will select this file okay which we have defined at the pipeline level so it will be pipeline dot parameters dot file okay it is from the pipeline level so click ok if you notice here the parameter which we have defined was data set level so data set dot file name okay so this we have given over here this is the first row only so we don't want the first row we want all the rows to be landed into our destination folder so we will disable this first row option from here Lookup activity looks fine here. Let's try to execute this lookup activity. Okay. Validate first and then try to debug this activity. So here, let's say we will give the value of the file. So let's take the value of emp data dot csv, copy it and paste here and click on OK. So that we will see that the data is coming through the lookup activity properly or not. Let's wait for it to finish. So it succeeded. If we go here to the output, we can see the count three values array and it has employee ID, employee name, department ID, one, two, three. Okay. Because the employee data.csv has that content. Okay. We add it. It has one, two, three employee ID, name and department ID. Okay. So we have, we are getting the data properly. Whichever file name we are giving in the parameter file name, we are getting the data. Okay. So our next job is to check if the file name has the count greater than zero. Okay. So if we open here in the JSON, which is created by the lookup activity, what we can see is count. Okay. Count is equals to three, which signifies that there are three rows. Okay and the three rows data is appearing here. So now we have to do a condition check. Okay. So for checking the condition, we have the if activity. Okay. So if condition, we will take from the iteration and conditionals tab. So we'll take the if condition activity here on the canvas and then we'll connect from the lookup to if condition activity. Okay. And we'll select the if condition activity. We'll go to the activities tab in the general tab we need not write anything we'll just go to the activities tab and in the expression we have to write the condition expression of if condition activity the values must evaluate to true and false so we here only we have to give the condition which we want to define for the csvs regarding the row count or the csvs having data so we'll click on add dynamic content here and here we have to check the content of the file. So how we will check in the activity outputs that is the previous activity was lookup. So the lookup one activity output here we have the return value count of rows and array of row data. So our logic is based on the count of rows. If the count of rows is not zero or if it is greater than zero, then we have the data in the CSV and that CSV we are going to process and transfer to the destination folder. So if the count of rows is greater than zero, that CSV we want to copy to the destination. So we will select this, click to insert 
expression count of the rows okay so it will give you activity lookup activity output dot count okay so if this count is greater than zero okay so we have if we go back here in the functions uh, tab and we'll go to the logical functions here we have different logical functions okay and there is a function called greater which returns true if the first argument is greater than the second okay so the first argument here will be the lookup activity output count okay if it is greater than the second second argument will give at zero and the second argument we will give it as zero okay so how we will write this greater is greater within brackets the first argument comma the second argument okay in the syntax you can see here okay so what we will do is we will go to the expression and we'll go at the top that is before the lookup activity output count and we'll select this greater function and inside this greater function we will give or we will cut this activity output count just cut it and we'll paste here as the first argument and comma and take the second argument as zero okay so this gives you the complete expression if the first argument is greater than zero then this will be the evaluation condition that is the if condition in our case let's click on okay so we have given the expression in the if condition okay if the count is greater than zero what we have to do we have to do a copy okay so if this evaluates to true then in the case that is the true case we will click on edit and we'll perform here the copy operation so the copy operation lies under the move and transform so we'll take the copy in the canvas you can see here the pipeline was there if condition was there and if within if we are under the true activities so that's why in the true activity we are taking the copy operation the general tab will be as is we'll go to the source tab and here we will select the same data set so the data set uh, delimited text 17 we will select so we'll go here and select the delimited text 17 okay so here again we have got the file name so we'll give the pipeline parameter which comes under the parameter section so we'll select it okay pipeline parameters dot file click ok and then at the sync level we will go and at the sync level we will select the output location so the output location we wanted it inside the container test output container and inside the output files folder okay so we'll go to the storage enter account we will select the delimited text this time it will be 18 the link service is already there we'll browse to the file location that is test output folder inside the output files we want to land the output files okay let's click on first row as header let's click ok and the settings is done for the copy activity so now this is done we'll go back to the pipeline and inside the if we are so here you could see that there is a false case too so in the false case we do not want to copy so we'll leave the false case with no activities so only if the csv has data that is the row count is greater than zero okay first argument is having the count greater greater than zero then only it will copy that is if it is true it will copy if it is false it will not do anything it will not have any activity means it will not do anything so the settings for the lookup the if condition block and in the copy we have completed now we'll try to validate the pipeline it's validated and now we'll try to debug okay so let's debug click on debug and we have to give the file name so let's first try the files which are empty okay so you have seen that this has size 0 b and 2b employees info so we'll copy this employees info and give here the file name okay and see if this is getting copied or not so we have given and we can see that the pipeline is getting executed the first activity lookup is in progress let's wait for the if condition block to also start So both succeeded if we go one by one so let's go to the lookup activity and we'll see here 
the count is zero. That means the file does not have anything, and the if condition block has executed. Okay, but you can see here the copy activity has not executed because this is going into the false if condition case. Okay, which defines that no activity has to be executed. Okay, and if we go to the test output folder and try to refresh here, so after refreshing we could not see the file copied from the source folder. That is employee info dot cfv csv was empty, so it is not copied here. Okay, so this check we have done, uh, and we noted that for this file the size was zero b. Okay, now we will try to execute or debug run it again. So with this time we'll take employee info copy dot csv which has two b size. Okay, and again since it does not have data, so it should not get copied. Though the file size is two b, it should not get copied because it does not have any row count. It is empty. Okay, so let's wait for the debug run to finish. So again, you can see that the lookup will show you the count zero, and if condition is executed, but the copy has not executed, and in the output folder again, we do not find that the employee is info file, info copy file has been copied. Okay, so these two will not be copied. Now, let's test with employee data and students marks. So we'll go again here and perform a debug run, and this time we'll give the students marks dot csv in the file name so we have given it we'll click okay and wait for the pipeline to complete and we will see that after lookup and if copy will also be executed so now you can see that copy data activity has also executed in the lookup output if you see it shows that it has 20 count okay row count is 20 okay if we open the file here to to see the contents of the file click on edit we have here 20 rows okay excluding the header and it has executed the copy activity and in the output we should see the file so a students marks.csv has copy has been copied and if we see it has the same data as the source okay so this short demonstration helps us to filter out all those files which do not have data and only copy the files or the CSVs which have the row count greater than zero. So we demonstrated it using the lookup activity, taken the lookup activity output, the row count greater than zero in the if condition block, and then in the true case, we have copied the data. Okay, so in the beginning of the video, I've told you when it is useful. So what happens is that every day, let's say in a folder, a file is arriving. So we can use a, uh, when a blob is created, trigger in the same for the same pipeline and let's say due to some reason the file does not have data and we are having the requirement that if the file does not have data we need not process that file and give us an email or send me an email uh, that yeah the file has data and it has been processed to the destination folder and a failure email also um, saying that yeah uh, the file is empty so so that check which we have to do for the file row count check that it is if it is empty or it has data we'll do this using it using this logic okay and regarding the email sending i've already created a video that you can use the web activity and the logic app i'll try to make a complete video demonstrating the logic using the triggers then this condition check as well as sending email in a different video and yeah that requirement to check that yeah the file does have data or does not have data so that logic we can do using this lookup activity and the condition check. Okay. So I hope you have understood the video. Thank you for watching. Happy learning. Bye.